Moment maps are an object that come up in the specific field of geometry that I study, and they are a way of taking a complicated geometric object and assigning to it something that looks like a polygon in two-dimensional space or higher dimensional analogs, which we call polytopes. So for every complicated object that you have that I'm interested in looking at in my geometric world, there's this very combinatorial object, meaning an object that has somehow easy to describe properties that look like polygons or higher dimensional analogs, these polytopes, um, and we can play around with these these higher dimensional polytopes and try to derive information about the original geometric objects. So it's kind of a tool to get us from complicated mathematics to something we can get our hands on that's a little bit simpler to play with. A good example of a moment map is actually it, the uh, geometric object we would be interested in would be a two-dimensional sphere. So you could just the surface of a ball and the map would say take the height of the sphere. So it would just be a very simple map and the image of that map is a line segment which says how high it was. So if I think of my sphere as being right here, the height of it is just this big and it's just a little line segment. And that line segment is a one-dimensional polytope. So it's a very simple object to think about line segments. It's a much more complicated object to think about the sphere. Just as a simple thing of what's difficult about it, for a line segment, it's pretty easy to say what the length of that line segment is. Whereas for a sphere, it's pretty complicated. You need calculus to figure out what the surface area is of that sphere. So that would be an example of something that would come up, but the objects that we deal with are typically much higher dimensional than two dimensions. Uh, uh, one of my favorite ones is actually a six dimensional object, and it's complicated the way it looks. I don't think I even have a visual representation of it except as the polytope that corresponds to it, which would be a hexagon in this case. So that would be maybe an example of the kind of thing that we look at, but we get to very high dimensions very quickly. So some of what we're trying to do, we have uh, combinatorial language. We have language that just extracts information about the polytopes, and we can't even draw the polytopes themselves. Even the polytopes are in very high dimensions. But the original spaces that we looked at are so complicated that there really is no good way to visualize them or uh, ways to describe them except in how they are actually defined.